1704. After the glorious victory at the Battle of Blindheim, the armies of Marlborough and Eugene split up and returned to their front lines. France lost all its conquests in Germany and Louis ordered all his armies to prepare for defense against the coming Allies' invasions. The defection of Portugal to Allies' side significantly eased the plans of invading Spain. In the spring of 1704, the Anglo-Dutch fleet ferried Archduke Charles with 10,000 troops to Portugal for the upcoming invasion of Spain. The Archduke of Austria, who had proclaimed himself King of Spain, by his appearing planned to win supporters in Spain. The Allies, by the sabotage attack, hoped to pull the French forces from the Eastern Front for a successful attack by Marlborough and Eugene. But unluckily, the invasion was not successful and the Allies squadron was ordered to sail to the Mediterranean Sea in order to support Savoy in the planned attack on Toulon. However, Victor Amadeus, the Duke of Savoy, was unable to provide troops for this operation in time and the Allies Armada was ordered to return. Nevertheless, they managed to capture Gibraltar on the way back, which was a very important strategic point, and Louis XIV, revising this, orders his fleet to recapture and return the lost gates to the Mediterranean Sea at all costs. Yet the Battle of Malaga ended in a draw, both sides did not lose a single ship. In the meantime, the French fleet returned to Toulon and announced their victory, although they actually admitted defeat by their retreat. Disappointed in the inefficiency of big amount of sheep after this battle, Louis refuses major sea operations and his fleet of full complement never again left Toulon. In 1705, Marlborough proposed to initiate an attack from the Rhine. However, the Dutch were unable to provide the army with sufficient supplies. Moreover, in May 1705, Leopold I dies and Joseph I, the elder brother of Archduke Charles, becomes the new emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, thus leaving the empire busy with its internal affairs at that moment. Which is why Marlborough concentrated on an invasion in the north, Eugen, at this time, managed to push back the French a little in order to ease their pressure on Savoy. Nevertheless, the French forces managed to besiege Toulouse. In Catalonia, Archduke Charles managed to capture Barcelona and most of the Catalans, who did not respect Madrid very much, and Valencia, Murcia, and Balearic Islands went over to his side and recognized Charles of Habsburg as their king. In 1706, Marlborough begins his victorious march in the Spanish Netherlands. After a series of major victories, he captures Antwerp, Ghent and Bruges, driving the French out of most of the Spanish Netherlands. What is more, the French had to urgently transfer part of the troops from the Rhine to stop Marlborough's offensive. Eugene in the south was also successful. Joining with the Duke of Savoy, they managed to defeat the French near Turin and expel them from all the northern Italy. Spain became the next center of hostilities. In June 1706, the Allies managed to capture Madrid, but Charles Habsburg did not have time to enter the capital. Philip V moved his residence to Burgos and announced that he would not renounce the throne. The Castilians were outraged that the eastern provinces and the heretical English wanted to impose their king to them. Uprisings were everywhere. The Allies, having no support, were forced to leave Madrid, while Charles returned to Barcelona, which he made his residence. The misfortunes France and its allies have experienced in 1706 forced Louis XIV to attempt making peace with the Dutch. He was prepared to cede Spain and its colonies in a new world to Archduke Charles if Philip retained Milan, Naples and Sicily. The United Provinces were giving fortresses in the Spanish Netherlands to strengthen their borders, but the English and Austrians were against any conditions that considered the division of the Spanish Empire. In 1707, both sides anxiously followed the success of a young Swedish king, Charles XII, who at that time managed to deal with the Northern Union alone. And the Austrian Habsburgs, 
were scared the most because the unpredictable Charles, with his powerful army, which at that time was based in Saxony, could attack Vienna and tip the balance against them drastically. In April, there was an official meeting between Charles and Marlborough. Marlborough turned out to be a talented diplomat and expressed admiration for the generalship of the Swedish king. As soon as the meeting ended, he sent a letter to London that Charles was going to march east. In the meantime, the emperor began to have a shortage of troops due to the unwillingness of many German dukes to supply him with troops. Therefore, on the northern front, Marlborough could not make a move without German support. In Spain, the Allies planned to recapture Madrid, but Archduke Charles quarreled with the English commander, Henri de Messieu, and returned his troops to Catalonia. And the remaining 20,000 Allies' army suffered defeat from the Franco-Spanish troops in the Battle of Almanza. In my opinion, it is interesting that an English commander of a French origin was defeated by a French commander of an English origin who was also the nephew of Duke of Marlborough from an extramarital affair of an exiled King of England with his sister. Marshal Bewick followed his father into exile and had a brilliant career in the French army. In Northern Italy, the Emperor ordered Eugene to initiate an attack on Toulon. But unfortunately, Duke of Savoy delayed sending aid and part of Eugene's troops captured Naples. In addition, after the defeat of Almanza, the promised reinforcements from Spain did not arrive. As a result, French army inspired by the recent victory was able to push back his troops and break the siege. Despite the successes of France, Louis did not give up trying to make peace and made a new proposal promising the Dutch trading privileges in Spain, but the Allies again refused. In 1708, the French forces focused on the northern direction and were able to regain control of Bruges and Ghent. The army of Eugene of Savoy arrived from the south to help the Duke of Marlborough. Brave Marlborough wanted to immediately launch an attack on France, but the plan was too ambitious and Eugene managed to convince his friend. Instead, they returned Bruges, Ghent and Lille to their control, which allowed them to gain a foothold in the region, and the French forces did not dare to continue their attack. The weakness of France was clearly demonstrated in the conditions of peace which they were now ready to consider. Although, initially they demanded at least Naples and Sicily for Philip, now Louis XIV was ready to give up the entire Spanish possessions. However, the Allies put in claims for even more humiliating conditions for France. They demanded to cede French possessions in the West Indies and also insisted that Louis himself send an army to remove his own grandson from the throne. Enraged, Louis rejected all the proposed conditions and the war continued. In 1709, new units of Villars arrived in the north who were appointed to command the entire northern army. The Allies had by that time laid siege to the fortress of Mons. Villars had off to save the fortress, but did not risk a direct attack. Instead, he ordered his units to fortify positions 15 kilometers south of Mons, near the village of Melpaque. Both sides pulled an incredible amount of troops here to fight in what would become the largest battle of the 18th century under the command of the most brilliant commanders of their time. The French marshal wisely placed his troops and artillery on the heights between the two forests. Plus, part of the troops was located on the edge of the South Woods. The last idea was to tire out the Allied forces with a staunch defense and inflict maximum losses. Marlborough was in charge of the left flank of the Allies in the center and Eugene was of the right. Moreover, the rely was made on a swarm attack by Eugene, who was supposed to be helped by forces sent around the left flank of the French. September 11, 1709, after the thick fog cleared, a symphony volleys of cannon fire began from both sides. The Allies rushed to attack, which however did not go according to plan since Eugene of Savoy had to launch an attack without waiting for the turning maneuver of the troops that got lost in the south woods. A bloody battle took place all day. The Allies suffered huge losses. And only in the evening, a lost unit appeared which became a real threat to the left flank of the French. Marshal Villars sends reserve detachments from the center, thanks to which they managed to stop 
the offensive of Eugene, but it was at that moment that Duc de Villars was badly wounded, which greatly affected the fighting spirit of his subordinates. Marlborough saw the movement of the enemy's reserve forces and realized that the French had weakened the center, where the main attack of the Allies focused on his orders. The infantry managed to create a split in the center where all the Allies' cavalry rushed, but they met a strong backlash from the French cavalry. Marshal Boufflers, who replaced the wounded Villars, did not risk further splitting the army and withdrew the French troops. Due to huge human losses, the Allies were unable to continue their attack. The largest battle of the 18th century was also the bloodiest in the war for the Spanish succession. Although, from a tactical point of view, it was an undeniable victory for the Allies, from a strategic in the context of the whole campaign of that year, the French remained the winners. In a letter to Louis, Marshal Villar wrote, If God grants us the grace to lose such a battle again, your majesty can count on all of his enemies being destroyed. In 1710, Louis again offered peace, this time going too far, offering to fund troops to depose his grandson. The Allies again insisted that Louis himself send his troops, although it was evident that the United Provinces were tired of the endless war. There were no major changes in the front that year, except that Allies again captured Madrid. But same as in 1706, they could not hold the capital and were defeated during the retreat. Philip V firmly settled down in Spain and the imperial forces as before were concentrated in Catalonia. But everything changed radically in 1711. On April 17th, the Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, Joseph I, suddenly died of smallpox, leaving no male heir behind, what made his younger brother the first to inherit the imperial crown. And the Archduke Charles, who returned from Barcelona, was proclaimed Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire under the name of Charles VI. This meant that in the event of the victory of the Allies, the Empire of Charles V would be revived, which did not suit either English or the Dutch at all. The secret negotiations between England and France began. In all theatres, the warring parties did not take any decisive actions, limiting themselves to Mars and minor actions. In in 1712, official negotiations began between representatives of Britain, France and the United Provinces, which reached a dead end since after the death of the grandson of Louis XIV and then the great-grandson's death, Philip V could become the possible heir to the French crown if his sickly nephew had not survived, which again threatened the unification of France and Spain under the rule of one monarch. But under pressure from the Allies, Philip V renounced the right to inherit the French throne. Negotiations continued and ended up in the signing of Peace of Utrecht in 1713. Despite the withdrawal of Great Britain and the United Provinces from the war, the Emperor was going to continue fighting against France and Spain. But the success of the army of Marshal Villars on the Rhine forced him to sign the Rastatt and Baden Peace Treaties, which put an end to the War of the Spanish Succession. As a result of the war, Philip V was confirmed as the King of Spain, but he refused to inherit the French throne, thereby breaking the union of the royal courts of France and Spain. Philip saved all of Spain's overseas possessions, but Austria meanwhile gained the Spanish Netherlands, Naples, Milan and Sardinia. Sicily was annexed to the Duchy of Savoy, while Gibraltar and the island of Menorca to Great Britain that also received significant trading privileges in the Spanish colonies in America. There were no serious changes in the borders of France in Europe, but their expansion into the Central Europe was stopped. France withdrew backing for the exiled Jacobites and confirmed Anne as the rightful Queen of Great Britain. In addition, they hand over some territories in North America in favor of Britain. The United Provinces received several forts in the Spanish Netherlands, and some trading privileges, but the war made the Dutch Republic so weak that it could no longer compete with Britain in maritime trade and cease to be the great power. And in Europe, the long-awaited peace has come. But will it last long? 